This is Professor Derf Seitz. This Java tutorial is about the Java Class Library Collections Framework Classes. A collection is a group of elements of a given data type. And the data types that can be contained in collections in the collection framework have to be object types. They cannot be primitive types. However, because of the wrapper classes, such as an int has the wrapper class integer, primitive types can be effectively included in collections. This class diagram shows the primary uh, introductory collection classes. Not shown here are maps and sets. In order to understand this class diagram, it's important to understand what the different arrows mean. Because we have a number of interface interfaces here. Looking at them, there's everything with this interface word with the double angle brackets stereotype is an interface. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven interfaces. And remember, interfaces define a protocol, a set of functions that other classes need to implement. And so they govern the, the standard naming of function calls. Starting um, with the different kind of arrows then, down here we have an array list. It has a dashed arrow with a closed arrowhead and that is a realization relationship that says that this array list is a realization of this interface. That means it implements that interface. It has all these functions defined in it. Therefore we don't need to show anything in the array list. The arrow implies that all this is available there. The next kind of an arrow that we want to look at is the same kind of an arrowhead, but a solid line. This is interface inheritance or extension. So the Q interface here extends or adds on to the collection interface, but it's still an interface. It's not an implementation. The last type of arrow in this diagram is the dashed arrow with an open arrowhead. This relationship is a dependency relationship where a class such as iterable has a reference to an iterator class and is dependent upon that class. All of these class and interface names uh, with a couple exceptions have the capital letter E in angle brackets next to them. That's what's called generics. It means that, as we see here in this comment, that the capital E represents the type of the elements, the data type of the elements. Each of these collections can take any data type to, for its elements and there's support in Java. The compiler, when it sees code where the program specifies a particular type to be used for the generics, then it will compile that type into the code in the appropriate places without needing to have multiple class definitions. It's all handled through this very nice generics framework. And so we see the E in various places representing whatever the type is that's being used at uh, actually at runtime for that particular instance. Okay, going through now and looking at what's here, we'll start at the top. There's an interface called iterable and it has one function called iterator which returns an iterator and the iterator is an interface that allows you to iterate or to traverse through a collection 
and its functions are has next, which checks to see if there is a next item or element, those are synonyms, in the collection. That doesn't get the item, it just finds out whether there is one. Next actually gets the next item without removing it from the collection, and remove removes it, the current element, from the collection. Scanner is shown here as an example of a class that implements the iterator interface. Scanner has a has next, next, and remove. It also provides other variants such as next int, next double, has next int, has next double. Moving down, list iterator is an extended interface off of iterator, provides some additional iteration methods that are particular for list. And we'll be talking more about the differences between list and queues and stacks momentarily. Notice that there are no implementers shown here for list iterator, but there's a note says it's implemented by private inner classes. For example, if you have a class that implements the list interface, such as ArrayList, inside that class, the implementation is that there's a private inner class, so that when this function here in list called list iterator is called, which returns a list iterator, actually a private a reference to a private inner class is return and since it is of type list iterator it will have these capabilities these functions available in that object down at the bottom down here is a class called collections with an s on the end it has static functions that manipulate on entire collections one, a very noteworthy one, is a sort function that will take a list interface, anything that implements that, and sort it. Going back to the top part up here, <clears throat> we were looking at iterable, and we went down this side over here. Moving over here, we have an interface called collection. It's a very primary interface in the collections framework. It has the ability to add an element to the collection, to clear out the entire collection, it has a function to check whether an object is contained in the collection, contains, returns a boolean, it has the standard equals uh, object com comparison to see if a collection is equal to another collection, is empty to see if there's any elements in the collection, remove an element, find out the number of elements through the size function, and there's even a to array that can move from a collection to an array. Notice that collection, that interface, has three primary extenders, those of which are further implemented uh, with various classes down here, so it's, it's a very common point of reuse, of implementation, of protocol. Looking first at the queue, a queue is an extender and it has three primary functions that characterize it. One of them is already mentioned up here in this collection interface, but it's so fundamental to the characteristics of a queue that it's shown again here. A queue you can, well let's understand a queue first. A queue is like a line of people waiting in line, and there's a person who is the first one in the line that will be the next person to be served and there's a back of the line or a rear where new people enter so a queue has a 
a front and a rear and you add things to the rear of a queue and you remove items from the front of the queue and you can also peek at the front of the queue to see which item is there, which element is there without removing it. You don't look inside the queue, you're dealing with those endpoints, the front and the rear. So that's a queue. And next, let's talk about the list. The list here is where you can now look inside the, the collection, not just at the ends of the collection. It has the ability to add with an index. Notice that these functions here, many of them use indexes. And the items in a list, traditionally as just like arrays, are indexed zero relative. And these functions allow you to look at and to change things within the list, not just on the endpoints like a queue. So you can add something at an index. You can get an item in a particular index, find the index of an item, find the last index of an item if it appears more than one time in the collection. You can get a list iterator to iterate through the list, remove an item at an index, set the value, change the value of an item at an, a particular index, and you can also get a sublist from a particular index to another index, which is just a reference into the actual larger list. It does not make a copy. So list differentiates itself by having visibility right into every member within the list, not just some boundary members. This is an interface. Implementing the list interface is the array list, which is a, a very useful and widely used class. From older code, legacy code from years ago, there's a vector class that implements list. Now, because it's been integrated into the collections framework, and of primary interest for educational purposes in studying collections, an extender, uh, which inherits from Vector, is Stack. Stack is a simple collection type data structure that is characterized because it has a top. You can think of it as like a stack of plates on a table. It has the top plate and you only interact with a stack through its top item. You either take the top item or you put a new item on top the top item. So everything happens, all the actions at the top of the stack. The stack does uh, inherit all these functions all the way up. Notice the chain here. Vector we're not showing, but all these functions in list and all these functions in collection, they all come down through stack. But primarily, when someone wants to use a stack, they're not going to be using all those. They're going to use it as a stack. That's just this little set of functions here. So you want to see if the stack has anything in it. You call the empty function and it'll tell you true or false if it's empty or not. There's a peak function where you can look at the top element see what it is without removing it. There's a pop which removes, gives you the top element and takes it off the stack at the same time and a push where you take an item and put it on the stack as the new top element. Over here, right here, is a linked list. Linked list, well, we'll come back to that after we cover deck up here. Deck is a, a, a double entry queue. It's a queue 
that um, has a front and a rear, but it allows either operation, addition, or removal to take place on both ends. So it's a double entry queue. You have a more flexibility there. And if you look at the functions, you'll see like add first and add last. So at both ends, you can add get first and get last. You can get from both ends, peak first and peak last, just looking at both ends. There's a pop and a push, which um, are sort of more stack kind of functionality. So DEC is also targeted to be a general purpose data structure that can serve the needs of various uh, traditional data structures. A remove, so you could reuse it as a, a stack. And actually in the Java API documentation, it recommends that you do use something like a DEC rather than the legacy stack. However, the stack will work well if you're just doing basic stack functionality. And also it has remove first and remove last. Notice that, however, DEC is an interface. It's not something you can use as is. An implementer of it is an array deck. Array deck implements all the functionality of deck and also the functionality of queue. Linked list here is quite versatile. It has all the functionality of list plus all the functionality of queue plus all the functionality of deck. However, again, to not confuse um, people with what you're doing, normally a linked list would be used in the traditional sense of a list having a front and also another a rear to it, but you would start at the front and traverse the list looking through it, and it would not be used as a necessarily as a queue or a stack because a list you can you have visibility to the inside of it. You're not just doing those endpoint kind of functionality. So there's a lot of flexibility here and a lot of power here and a lot of work has gone into this collection framework over a number of years and rather than build your own collections from scratch it makes a lot of sense to learn this framework and get some functionality for you without having to do all the detailed implementation and, and testing and all of that. You're just going to use and reap the benefits of this nice framework.